referred to by many as the Gothic Jail or the Hanging Jail. Beauregard Parish Jail has seen many horrors over the years, and if you get to visit this historic location, you may very well see some of those horrors firsthand. Hey there dissectors, today we're going to take a look at the dark, haunted history of a jail mostly referred to by its nicknames, but we are going with Gothic Jail for this episode. Built in 1914 in Derrida, Louisiana, and designed by Colonel William Lewis Stevens, this impressive jail looks more like a picturesque mansion with its Gothic revival architecture, which is strangely so different than any other buildings in the area, including the courthouse, which was designed at the same time. With its Tudor arches, dormers and bay windows, the property had three floors, with the ground floor being the jailer's quarters, as well as holding cells for those not scheduled to stay for long. The other two floors held four cells each, and each cell could fit 12 prisoners. Now this jail came about around the time that officials were thinking it made more sense to rehabilitate than to torture in any way. With this in mind, all cells had a separate bathroom, and the skylight on the top floor of the building provided natural light to the area too, and this could be accessed via a spiral staircase. Obviously, the prisoners still had a pretty rough time while they were locked away. They still had to endure the punishing hard steel bunks that could test anyone's back at the best of times. Another thing worth noting here too is that there were dark tunnels which connected the courthouse to the jail. This was done in an attempt to keep the public away from any of the prisoners locked away inside. As I mentioned earlier, the other name given to the jail is the Hanging Jail, and two prisoners who met their end here certainly had an interesting tale to tell. The story goes that two men named Joe Jenner and Moulton Brazou killed a taxi driver called Joe Breville on August 28th, 1926. After killing the poor man, they stole the $14 that he had in his possession, which is about $250 today, and then dumped his body in the old Pickering Mill Pond. When Breville's body was soon discovered, the police checked the taxi's records and it was here that the names of the men were found as his last hire. So confessions and a conviction from the two men quickly followed. After being sentenced to death at the end of 1926, the men managed to get a stay of execution for a short time, but on March 9th, 1928, both men were hung, taking less than 35 minutes to kill them both. With their last breaths, they were still protesting their innocence. Today, visitors to the Gothic jail have witnessed the ghostly apparitions of the two men, with some coming away with photographic evidence. I'm sure you can imagine the type of horrors that went on inside the jail. I mean, you didn't need to meet the Grim Reaper at the end of a noose. In the time that the place was in operation, there are many stories of suicide attempts and death, as well as multiple assaults during its 70 years of operation. Because let's face it, in jail, you can get the lesser known criminals, and then there are ones that made a profession out of it since youth, and to say that they are hardened would be an understatement. The lack of law enforcement presence in the area back then made it very enticing to outlaws, and many came into the area, creating scenarios not unlike in the Wild West. In the museum at the Gothic Jail, there are many stories about notorious outlaws, and today we're going to take a look at a guy nicknamed Leather Breeches Smith. Said to actually be called Charles Smith, Leather Breeches has been depicted as many things over the years, from a union fighting timber worker to a fugitive from Texas. One thing is for sure. He was known to always carry with him a loaded Winchester rifle and a six-shooter on each hip, you know, just in case. Legends state that he would hide in the woods before ambushing travellers for any food or goods they were carrying. Eventually, locals became so tired of the situation that many packed up their belongings and left, leaving behind their livelihood, as they'd rather make a fresh start than face the notorious criminal. The man, given his nickname due to the yellow buckskin pants that he loved to wear, had a very quick temper. When it became obvious that law enforcement was starting to take a firmer grip on the local criminal element, Leather Breeches decided he was feeling unhappy about this, and on September 25th, 1912, was involved in a shootout with deputies. Sadly, when the smoke finally cleared and the gunshot blasts stopped echoing, his body was discovered riddled in bullet wounds. After his body was transferred to Merryville, no one claimed his body. So Leather Breeches was buried in what is now Merryville Cemetery. 
A wooden plaque at the base of a tree near where he is buried now reads, Leather Breeches Smith, slain 1912. So what entities are said to haunt the Gothic jail, you might wonder? Well, over the years, visitors and staff alike have reported being physically pushed, seeing full-bodied apparitions as well as hearing the ghostly voices of the old prisoners. There is even said to be a photograph of the jail which shows a figure standing on the porch and is thought to be the ghost of an old jailer. The old tunnels that were used to transport the inmates has a very strange image on one of the walls too. During the morning hours you can see the face of a demon wearing a hood with horns and eyes clearly visible. But when you visit the same spot later in the day, the image seems to be transformed into an angel and this happens nearly every single day. In 2009, there is a story that states an amateur photographer captured an image in one of the windows of the property. When the lady showed the image to Laurie Dabon, the Beauregard Parish Tourism Director, Laurie could instantly see the image of a man with a moustache and beard standing in the window. Those who saw the picture all agreed, and so an artist rendered drawing was done of the face so that it would be known how he would have looked in real life. Now years later, as Laurie was checking through old records on the area and the jail, she came across an image that shocked her to her core. It was like looking at the drawing they'd created, and after researching, they found it to be of a man named Deputy Isles. As you can see, this jail has seen a lot of action, and many believe that the property is just as active with inmates as it was all those years ago. They just take less looking after as, well, they happen to be dead. What are your thoughts on this old jail? It is certainly a lot different than some of the other prison establishments we've dissected in the past. And I think a lot of that comes from the way that they approached the lives of the prisoners. They wanted them rehabilitated and not tortured for the term of their sentences. Do you think that will have helped them? Or do you feel that the bullies locked away inside would have found new ways to make the others' lives a living hell? Let me know your thoughts on the Gothic Jail in the comments. As always, my friends, I hope this video finds you well and you should all be proud of yourselves. You survived January without any casualties. Well done. Until next time, dissectors, stay safe out there.